three candidates, 12 seats up for grabs. Tonight we'll listen to them, hear their responses, and witness a battle for the Senate. I'm Linda Humilia. This is ANC Presents Harapan 2013. With us tonight from the Democratic Party, Baldomero Bal Falcone. From the United Nationalist Alliance, Richard Dick Gordon. And from Team Pinoy and the Nationalist Party, Antonio Sonny Trillanes IV. Their showdown begins in a moment. This is ANC's Harapan 2013. Welcome back. You can watch Harapan 2013 online via abs-cbnnews.com slash ANC Live Events. And engage with us on Twitter using the hashtag Harapan2013. It's time to get to know our candidates. In this part of the program, we ask each of them three questions with a minute each to answer. Our guests have been arranged alphabetically, so now let's get to know our first candidate. Only... Baldomero Falcone is one of the three candidates of the Democratic Party of the Philippines. A businessman and former professor, Falcone has not held any political position and was disqualified from running as vice president in 2010. Falcone believes government officials should use their positions to help the poorest of the poor. Baldomero Falcone Mr. Falcone, here is our first question. If you get elected as senator, what will be the topic of your first privileged speech and why? My first topic uh, would be the eradication of the pork barrel and use the pork barrel as the equity capital for the securitization of all the viable projects in all the districts of the country because we want to have an economic revert, an economic renaissance that all Filipinos should be enjoying, not just the political dynasties that control 70% of all the resources of the country. Uh, that should be my priority legislation. Okay, still have time, but uh, you want, uh, we can go to your... Well, the, the, uh, if I have time, I want... Uh, I want a debt equity arrangement wherein uh, the debt of the country should be equitized in the sense that uh, there are so many uh, Filipinos in America who wants to come in and invest in the country. Uh, given the debt for up. equity transition. Mr. Valtone, thank you very much for your answer. Here is your second question. Constitutional reform is part of the Democratic Party's platform. What are the top three changes you wish to see in the 1987 Constitution and why? Uh, eradication of the PDAP, uh, movement uh, into the parliamentary system, and uh, government financing for all elections to give equal chances to the rich and the poor. The reason why? Well, uh, it's quite obvious. Uh, only the rich in this country have a chance to be elected. The poor, although they are brilliant, have no chance at all. Like me, for example, I'm the poorest of the four of all candidates, but uh, I don't believe I have a Chinaman's chance in winning. Uh, except, of course, if the poor really band themselves together and post one of their own to the Senate seat. No? And uh, in the uh, form of government, I would like to opt for the parliamentary form of government, uh, federalism, so that we'll have a, a chance to have all the regions flower. We have very beautiful cultures and very beautiful people, but uh, because of Imperial Manila, 
matatabunan uh, sila. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Falcone. And here is your third question. The Democratic Party has a strong spiritual bent and your founder, the late Ernesto Ramos, was in fact a former Catholic priest. What do you think should be the role of religion and religious leaders in crafting laws and government policy? Uh, they have a very strategic role in the sense that God should always be centered in our uh, activities, whether uh, religious or uh, human activities. No, God of the role is our creator. He should be the center of all our activities. Uh, it is for that reason that uh, Manong Ernie Ramos, Manong Ernie Ramos, when he founded the uh, Democratic Party of the Philippines, had postulated that God should be the center of all political activities to fight graft and corruption, political dynasties, and all these evils that uh, confront our present society. God should be restored in the center of political life. Thank you, Thank you very much for your answer. Let's now get to know our second candidate. Richard Gordon's stint in government spans 30 years and has served as Olongapo Mayor, SBMA Chair, and Tourism Secretary. As Senator, he authored measures such as the Automated Election Law, the Tourism Act, and a law that gives more benefits to war veterans. Gordon lost in the 2010 presidential polls, but now the so-called Man of Action is seeking a senatorial comeback. Former Senator Richard Gordon. Senator Gordon, here's your first question. You had a very public fight with former President Estrada when he tried to remove you as SBMA chair. And similarly, it's uh, an, a fact that um, in Zambales, the Gordons and the Magsaysays are bitter political rivals. Why are you now with them in the national, on the United Nationalist Alliance? You know, you don't have to fight with everybody forever. And what you need to do is unite the country. Arab and I have been friends for a long time, even before uh, we fought in SBMA. We were together in the movies, because I was the lawyer of the movie industry. Arab and I had been friends as mayor. We, we both took a stand uh, when we were being removed by Cory Aquino. And now we're friends again. Uh, I think he has a very, he's a very good spokesman of the poor, and I think uh, we should listen to him when he talks about the poor. And certainly he's, uh, he's got a lot of experience as well that, that can aid in us in uh, crafting laws. On the other hand, the, the Maxay size, uh, you know, uh, we, we don't fight in the sense that uh, uh, it's a battle of truth. It's, it's no personality conflict. It's, a, it's, really a, it's really a diversion of ideas. Hindi kami nagkakasundo sa mga ideas. Hindi kami nag-agli sa mga dapat nilang ginagawa na alibaw yung nung araw, na yung mga importation ng cars, hindi namin gusto yan. Pero ngayon, eh, we have to be together because there is a party that has selected us. Thank you very much, Senator Gordon. Here is your second question. In 2010, you filed a petition asking the Quezon City Regional Trial Court to stop the publication of pre-election surveys on the grounds that these tend to condition voters' minds, a position you reiterated a few days ago. How do you respond to criticisms that you are sour-graping as a result of your mediocre survey showing? How can I sour-grape? It's just the election. They're not going to be able to do it. They're going to be able to do it. May na mind control na. Mind control sa advertising, mind control sa survey. Tama yung sinasabi ni Val eh. Talagang kung mayaman ka, lamang ka sa mind control dito sa bansang ito dahil ang mahal-mahal ang advertising. Magpapasurvey ka, about 2 million pesos ang sisigilin sa'yo. Hindi ako nagbabayad ng survey. What possible reason is there? Hindi ko sinasabing huwag kayo mag-survey. Proctor and Gamble ako dati. Nagsasurvey kami. Pero hindi namin nilalabas yung resulta ng survey. Pero dapat, yung resulta ng survey, lalo na sa halalan, eh huwag naman natin ilabas sapagkat may pag-iisip ang tao. Turuan natin ang tao mag-isip. Critical analysis is important. Eh, matagal tayo nasa ilalim ng colonial powers, hindi tayo pinag-iisip. Kailangan practice natin ang Pilipino mag-isip. Huwag susunod niya sa mga survey. Sapagkat hindi mo alam kung sino nagpapatakbo niyan eh. There are hidden faces. Hindi mo alam kung sino nagpa nagbabayo dyan. Abay, bakit tayo susunod dyan? Uh, so, pa-survey ka hanggang gusto niya. Huwag niyo lang ilalabas. Sa France, hindi ginagawa yan. Sa Italy, hindi ginagawa yan. Thank you very much, Senator Gordon. And now for our third question. What is your unfinished legislative business that you wish to return to the Senate? Please name the top three. I return to the Senate because I love my country. I will have served as the youngest delegate to the Constitutional Convention. The work of government is never finished. Hindi natatapos yan. Anong babalikan ko sa Senado? Baitanin natin ang gobyerno. 
Bakit mataas ang growth rate? Wala naman kayo nakukuhang negosyo. Sanay ako dyan. Sa Subic, naubos kami sa Pinatubo. Naubos sa ating trabaho. Nakakuha ko ng 200,000 trabaho. Ang Subic ngayon, fourth biggest shipbuilding capital of the world. Uh, masasabi ko sa inyo na kailangan natin ipakita na ang mga pulis natin dapat kinokontrol. Ang gagaling bumaril ang pulis natin kahit ang nasa kotse, tinatamaan sa gitna ng, ng noo yung ta tao. May padalan na lang natin mga pulis sa Salbay sa Scarborough Show. Baka matakot pa ang mga inchik sa kanila. Uh, di ba? At pangatlo, dapat ayusin natin sa pamagitan ng plebs. Pairalin natin ang plebs. Ang senador, hindi lang gagawa ng batas. Kailangan ang senador mag-iimbestiga. Bakit hindi pinapairal yung tourism infrastructure zone, uh, enterprise zone? Bakit hindi pinapairal yung mga plebs? Bakit hindi pinapairal yung ibang mga batas? Ang dami nating batas, hindi pinapairal. That's a question I'm going to be keeping on asking. Thank you very much, Senator Richard Gordon. And now let's get to know our third candidate. He was a Navy lieutenant who was thrust in the national spotlight for joining the 2003 Oakwood Mutiny. In 2007, Antonio Trillanes successfully mounted a senatorial bid, even while behind bars. As a senator, Trillanes filed over 700 bills and resolutions and authored measures on defense and welfare that were later passed into law. Senator Antonio Trillanes. Senator Trillanes, here is the first question. Among the Senate's functions is to ratify treaties and international agreements. Why did you get involved in back-channeling efforts with China on the Scarborough issue, knowing that China wants bilateral talks that could end up in some kind of agreement or treaty needing Senate action later on? Uh, that is a foreign policy decision of the President. And uh, when you're talking about foreign policy, everybody unites behind the president. So it's part of the reasons why we have uh, chosen him. And at that point in time, the circumstances uh, dictated that uh, he opened a back channel. And uh, I was, uh, it was incidental that I was the one chosen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Trillanes. Here is your second question. After that public wrangling among senators over Senate savings, would you move to stop the practice of using Senate savings as additional budget to senators and bonuses to employees? Uh, in fact, that's already being done. Uh, the Commission on Audit uh, preempted that uh, decision by uh, saying that they won't accept certifications anymore as a form of liquidation. So that practice of uh, converting savings into additional MOOE will stop. That's it? <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Senator Trillanes. Matipid sa oras si Senator. Well, um, our third question for Senator Trillanes. During the early days of the 2010 presidential election, you supported Senator Manny Villar, but later um, backed Senator Noynoy Aquino. And last year, you returned to Villar as a new Nationalista member. How do you explain the shifting political ties? Uh, there was never any shift in political ties. Uh, we chose uh, Manny Villar, Senator Manny Villar, as our presidential candidate in 2010. And uh, it so happened that uh, when after, the, after President Aquino won, there was a coalition that included the Nationalist Party. So uh, everybody in the majority supported the President. So uh, I was being consistent, so uh, I don't see any shifting there. Thank you very much, Senator Trillanes, Senator Gordon, and Mr. Falcone. When we return, the candidates face off. You're still watching ANC's Harapan 2013. Be a wise voter on May 13. Know the facts about the elections. This is Halalan 2013. Welcome back 
to ANC Sarapan 2013. Tonight, we give the candidates themselves a chance to square off with their fellow senatorial aspirants on key issues. Let's now begin with Mr. Falcone. You have 30 seconds to ask former Senator Gordon, who has one minute to answer. Mr. Falcone, your question, please. Senator Dick, uh, I like your uh, program of volunteerism. How do you instill volunteerism in the youth and in the school system? To instill volunteerism in the youth, you have to have a vision. Of a, a vision is a mental picture of something better than what is today. And, you know, the youth is filled with ideals. And, uh, for example, in Subic, I said, this is an opportunity for us. Everybody expected us to rob Subic. Everybody expected us to steal the facilities. And, I, and everybody said, we we're, gonna, we're going to fail. So, what did I do? I did my children. 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 Pag nakita ng mga tao hindi natin ninanako ito at pinapaganda pa natin at hindi wala tayong sweldo, maraming sasama sa atin at maniniwala sa atin ang mga negosyante na tayo tunay talaga. Yan ang napakahalaga ng volunteerism because ang volunteer is priceless. Ako yung watchers ko, hindi ko binabayaran. Bakit? Pag binayaran ko na isang daang piso yun, babayaran ng dalawang daang piso kabila. May presyo ka na. Kung wala kang presyo, hindi ka mabibili. Kaya yung prinsipyo napakahalaga para sa ating mga kababayan na talaga ibalik natin yung prinsipyo na ikaw tumutulong ka there because there's a higher goal may common good may kabutihan pang kalahatan na dapat paglaban ng bawat Pilipino Thank you, Senator Gordon Well said, well said, well said. Mis Mr. Falcone ang inyo pong katanungan kay Senator Trillanes uh, Senator uh, you were very adventurous a few years ago that was uh, several years ago in uh, Hotel, uh, if I remember it right, no? You even brought tanks there? Oh, good, okay. How has the Senate experience calmed you down or have you abandoned your uh, ideology and your advocacies that made you move against the government at that time? Ah, wala po nagbago sa atin. Uh, I think uh, we remain the, the same person na nakita nila noong uh, 2003. Nag-iba lang po yung uh, battlefield, so to speak. In this uh, arena, uh, you, you have this opportunity uh, to make a change. You know? And uh, given the mandate that we have, at least you know that you have the support of the people and that you're representing their uh, ideals and aspirations. So, wala po nagbago. Thank you very much, Senator Trillanes. And thank, thank you for your Senator. questions, Mr. Falcone. Parang nasa lifestyle show lang mga <laughs> tanong ni Sir Bal. Former Senator Gordon, it's your turn. You have 30 seconds to pose a question to Mr. Falcone who has one minute to answer. Uh, well, gusto ko yung advocacy mo na yung mga may hirap eh, talaga magkaroon ng pagkakataon sa ma-equalize ang level playing field. Payag ka ba na ang Comelec eh, imbis na naniningil lang kung ano-anong ginagawa doon sa advertising, payag ka ba? na lahat tayo mga kandidato, isang araw sa Nabibaysia tayo, sa susunod na araw sa Bulacan tayo. Wala nang TV advertising, wala nang radio advertising. Doon na lang natin ilalagay sa TV doon at radio na babayaran ng Comelec para lahat tayo makakapagsalita ng maghapon para matanong ang mga tao. Maganda yan, maganda yan, uh, Senator. I'm glad you agree with me. Yeah, 100%, 100%, 100%. Because that will really give a chance to the poor. Uh, you know, there are many... Uh, creative and brilliant people also among the poor, but because of the high cost of campaigning, uh, their creativity is lost. No? Sayang, sayang. We should really uh, give uh, a chance to Comelec to correct and rectify these uh, deficiencies. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. You. Falcone. Thank you very much, Val. Thank you. Okay, uh, Senator Gordon, your question to Senator I have Trillanes. to follow up the question of Bal, because... Uh, that's something that has bothered me. And I don't want you to say that I say this behind your back. I say it before you. You led, an, you led a coup d'etat in 2003. I was Secretary of Tourism. I was very upset because I was going to be a tourist here. Pangalawa, ang, ang nagbabother ko, umulit na naman nung sumugod kayo sa Peninsula. You took an oath. Pinaaral ka na eskwela ng PMA. You took an oath to protect and preserve the Constitution. Then when you became an officer and a gentleman, you took an oath to protect and preserve the Constitution. And then again, when he became a senator, you took an oath to protect and preserve the Constitution. Not true. Okay. So, ano ang sagot ko? Bakit ganun? Ah, ganito po yan, ano? Uh, ang lesson sa, na pinag-aaralan, even ng mga elementary students, yung mga pinaglaban ng mga ninuno natin, katipunan, and uh, as I recall, we celebrate around 22 rebellions and mutinies against the uh, 
Spanish uh, 300 rebellions. Yes. Spanish uh, Spanish colonizers. So ito po, yun po ang lesson. Pagka meron kang isang presidenteng nag-aabuso at nag uh, nananamantala ng iyong bansa at iyong bayan, kailangan ka tumayo at lumaban. Hindi po yan, regardless of your position, yan po ay ang uh, right ng isang Pilipino to stand up for uh, what is right as a people. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you, thank you for your answer, Senator Trillanes, and thank you for your question, Senator Gordon. It's now the turn of Senator Trillanes to pose questions. You have 30 seconds to ask Mr. Falcone. What's one minute to answer? Uh, Mr. Falcone, uh, being a successful businessman, uh, what do you intend to contribute dun po sa legislative debate in case you win? Uh, in case I win, the people support us. I would like to teach all municipal, gov uh, municipal mayors, governors, and municipal development officers how to securitize. Securitization is a special skill which can easily be taught to the governors, mayors, and development officers how to create an amass development funds for any viable project in any district, in any province, so that from the domestic trust money and global trust money coming into the country, more jobs could be created and more businesses could be developed. I really want to securitize. Securitization should be made the special skill of all governors, all mayors, so that we can enjoy an economic renaissance, an economic revert that all Filipinos should enjoy, not just the uh, political dynasties that control 70% of our natural resources, Wealth should be enjoyed by all Filipinos. And we have all Thank you. Resources. Thank you, Mr. Falcone. Senator Trillanes, your question to Senator Gordon, please. Uh, Senator uh, Dick, uh, can you share with us uh, your secret uh, behind the successful transformation of uh, a Subic Base, uh, Subic Naval Base into the SBMA as we know today? Ang mga tao ang siyang sekreto doon. Hindi ako ang bida doon. Ako, ibinigay ko lang yung vision nung ako'y nanalong mayor ng 1980. Baka umalis ang base ka ako maghanda tayo. Kahit na gusto ko manatili pa ang base, sapagkat nakikita nyo ngayon, kulang tayo sa armas, wala tayong navy, ang air force natin naging all air, no force, nang umalis na itong mga Amerikano. E sabi ko, paghandaan natin yan. At ang nangyari dyan, ay naghanda kami at uh, walang nakikinig sa amin nung araw. So I kept telling our people, when you have an idea, paglaban mo. Tama yung sinasabi mo kayo, maglaba, paglaban natin, uh, sabihin natin sa mga tao kung bakit natin kailangan gawin. At nung nakita nila na wala na, our backs to the wall, pumunta kami sa Senado, kami ay nag-legislate, tumingi ng legislation, binigay namin yung Freeport Vision, tinanggap ng Senado, at pinanagutan namin. Kami nga hawak. At yung mga volunteers nagdatingan, at uh, ang nagbenta eh, sabi ko nga sa mga investors, tingnan niyo yan, walang sweldo yan, walang nawawala, nagtatrabaho, nag, nag, uh, eh lalo na pagka sinweldohan niyo, di mas magaling. Kaya yan ang sikreto ng Subic Bay. Thank you very much, Senator Gordon. Thank you, gentlemen, for your questions and your answers. When we return, questions from our special guest analyst and our live audience and followers from social media. When ANC Sarapan 2013 continues. top special guest analysts for Harapan 2013. Tonight, we are joined by Professor Prospero De Vera from the UP National College of Public Administration and Governance, who will ask each candidate a question with one follow-up. The candidates have one minute to answer. Let's begin. Professor De Vera, your question to Mr. Bal Falcone, please. Uh, thank you, Linda. Um, before I ask my question, let me say that uh, as Vice President of the University of the Philippines, I am extremely proud to be part of this program because our three candidates all have UP pedigree. Uh, Dick, 
Dick Gordon is a product of our law school. Sunny Trillanes is a product of the National College of Public Administration and Governance. And Bal Falcone took his graduate studies in UP. That's why the quality of the debate is uh, high. That's also why they're very nice to each other. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, this is for Bal Falcone. I looked at your Facebook page and I was a little uh, uh, worried about a statement there that says, and I quote, Philippine poverty is only artificially made. And you said, and I quote, knowing how to uncover this artificially created mischief is my personal crusade. For the sake of so many poor Filipinos who are forced to go abroad in order to meet basic family needs. What exactly do you mean when you say Philippine poverty is artificially made? Uh, thank you for asking me that question, Professor. No? Uh, a study of the uh, Philippine economic system would show that uh, the monetary currency in the country is controlled by the monetary board, which is peopled by uh, just the representatives of the commercial and universal banks uh, who, an, uh, who are owned by uh, just a few families and who do not want competition. Our study showed that, uh, for example, in the more progressive nations around us, like Malaysia, Singapore, the money supply and circulation is almost always 30% or even more of GDP. In the Philippines, it has never gone beyond 15%, sometimes even less. No? So uh, you have a situation where there is lack of liquidity in circulation in the country. So that explains the poverty in the country. And I am glad to see that uh, securitization can help a lot uh, in increasing the money supply in circulation in the country. That's why I'm pushing for securitization, which is a which is a special skill wherein you entrust the... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Falcone. Uh, professor, do you have a follow-up question? Uh, for, for Mr. Falcone, do you mean to say that we are not poor when you say poverty is artificial in this country? Yes, we are very rich in natural resources. Our people are so talented. But I cannot imagine why we are sending them up when in fact there should be political will that should develop all the natural resources in the country and make our people stay here and have their own families enjoy themselves here without breaking them up. We need the political will in the national leadership. That should solve this situation. Thank you very much, Mr. Falcone. Professor, your question to Senator Richard Gordon. This is for Senator Dick Gordon. UNA has defined itself as the quote-unquote constructive opposition. Yet, Tim Pinoy questions your party's real personality. And hindi daw kayo dilaw. To dispel these doubts, can you cite a policy of the Pinoy administration that you oppose? Why? And present your alternative or better policy to show that you are a constructive opposition and one that you will espouse if you become a senator. Well, unang-una, hindi ko may yellow because you are strong. We're brave. <laughs> uh, pangalawa, hindi kami yellow because uh, naniniwala kami mas maganda ang daan na kailangan na talaga may pupuntahan. And kami, we agree against corruption. Pero dapat hanggang sa baba. Ang dami nangungotong na pulis, ang dami nagluluko, hindi naman inaabot. Hinuli lang, ginugulo lang yung malalaki na dalawa, no? Yung Chief Justice saka yung Presidente ng Pilipinas. No? That's good. Pero ang importante dito, eh, Alimbawa, anong policy natin sa pasasabihin, malakas ang hanap buhay. Pero ang hanap buhay, 4,000 people live every day. Pumuputo sa ibang bansa. Di ba dapat we should have a policy of finding our future in not in foreign countries but in our native Philippines? Di ba dapat, hindi ba dapat yung Subic, Clark, Manila, gumawa tayo ng highway dyan, tatlong airport, tatlong seaport dyan, pati Marivelas. Di ba dapat punuan natin, hindi congest mo ang Maynila, dali mo sa industries dyan sa mga lugar na yan para sa ganun, maayos tayo, magkaroon ng hanap buhay. Eh, yun ang kailangan natin gawin. Thank you, Senator Gordon. Follow-up question, please, Professor. But as Senator, you, are, you will be elected to legislate. What would be the legislative solution to your... Uh, argument that uh, there are better ways by which employment could be made and better ways by which corruption can be addressed. What specific legislative proposals will you push for a senator uh, to address this uh, question? I pushed uh, the 3 two, one formula. Tatlong, tatlong airport, dalawang, dalawang seaport, ngayon tatlo na nga, pati Mariveles, para magkaroon ng hanap buhay. 
yung mga pagitan niyan para ma-decongest. Ang Maynila, 18,650 people per square kilometer. Sa Central Luzon, 650 per square kilometer. Uh, dapat siguro dagdagan natin, uh, 450 per square kilometer, dagdagan natin yung mga pabrika dyan para magbibisikleta na lang tao patungo sa trabaho. You will pump prime the economy. Pwede mo rin gawin sa Cebu yan. Pwede mo rin gawin sa Mindanao yan. A railroad in Mindanao would be a great idea. Yan ang mga nasabit na legislation ko uh, para lumakas ang ating industriya. Ang tourism natin, pairalin natin. Bakit hindi nyo pinapairal yung tourism enterprise zone? Hindi ba pinalalakas natin ang tourism? Bakit... Uh, Pagdating ng tourist, kinakapos tayo ng hotel, yung ating roro, dapat pagandahin, at dapat talaga palakasin natin ang tourism para sa ganun magkaroon ng habuhayan ng mga tao. Uh, there are a lot of other things that we could do. For an example, ang promotion ng ating bansa will be done by the Foreign Affairs Department and the Department of Trade. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much. And now, Professor, your questions to Senator Antonio Trillanes. Uh, this is for Senator Sani Trillanes. You have authored or co-authored some 30 laws in your uh, six years in the Senate, part of which uh, you were not physically present because you were in prison. Uh, a lot of these are professionalizing uh, certain professions, etc. Of all these laws, what law are you most proud of and would basically define your past six years? If there is one law among all of this what, that would define the Sunny Trillianes mark in the Senate, what would it be and why? And what would be your defining law that will define your next six years in the Senate if you are elected? The, uh, the defining law that could, uh, or the law that would define my past six years, I think uh, I'll have to uh, ask that I name two. And that's the AFP modernization law because the, our grievances started with the uh, inadequacies and uh, uh, ineffectiveness and uh, the ill-equipped armed forces. So this, with this law, we have come full cir circle. And we have now, we were able, we were able to, uh, to deliver on our promises, okay? Then next one is the uh, salary standardization law that uh, uplifted the lives of all government employees and that's just a start the next uh, law that may define the uh, uh, next term should be the universal health care law and uh, this is an anti-poverty uh, measure thank you very much Senator Trillanes follow up professor um, you were the staunchest uh, opposition to the K-12 a uh, proposal that is heavily supported by the president and the administration, and you opposed it officially in the uh, Senate. As a senator, if given another six-year term, what is your plan for the K-12 uh, as a legislator in terms of doing oversight to check whether it's really being implemented or correcting it if you still until now don't believe in the, in the viability of the K-12 proposal? Uh, first of all, my, op my opposition to the K-12 program at least would uh, uh, signify or symbolize my uh, independence regardless of my uh, strong alliance with the President if I believe that there are certain policies that will be detrimental to the interests of the people, I will speak my mind. And in this case, since it was already passed into law uh, or about to be signed into law, what I can do is precisely the oversight function. We'll have to check whether all the requisites have, have been met, uh, particularly the infrastructure side of the K-12 uh, program, and make sure that there won't be any dislo massive dislocations once it gets implemented in 2016 because there won't be any freshman uh, students come 2016 and that would cause some... Uh, some dislocations and disruptions among uh, the colleges and universities. Thank you, Senator Trillanes, and thank you, Professor Prospero de Vera of the UPNC PAG for your questions. And now we go to some questions posted by our friends on social media. Our first question is for Senator Richard Gordon. Twitter user Marvin J. Paga asks, would you consider yourself a trapo? I suppose that means traditional politician. Senator. I don't know what the trap is, quite frankly. Kung yung traditional palipat-lipat ng partido, magdanakaw, or ano, ginagawit at tao, then I'm not a trapo. 
I would like to say na we should not categorize people. Gamitin natin ang ating utak para matuto tayo mag-critically analyze sa mga kandidato. That is your right. Do not lose it to publicity, to one-liners, na sasabihin, trapo. Alamin ninyo. Check up ninyo. Ang mundo ngayon, napakadaling hanapin kung ano ang mga uh, palatuntunan ng tao. Meron tayong Google, meron tayong Yahoo. Kaya nyo hanapin lahat siya. But do not, do not try to categorize people. Para kayo nag-asawa, kinakategorize nyo. Wala nang asensyo itong asawa ko. Kaya walang mangyayari sa ating bayan. So ang importante dito, alamin natin kung ano ang kakayahan, ano ang track record. It is your right. Tatanungin ng kandidato, paano mo gagawin yung sinasabi mo? Nangangako ka. Pag nakikinig ako sa mga politiko, lahat pinapangako, the earth, the moon, and the stars. Pero paano mapagagalawin? Dapat talangin natin, ang dami-dami nating batas. Bakit hindi pinapairal yung mga batas? It's the same issue over and over again. Dapat nag-iisip tayo. Kaya tayo nagre-revolusyon sa tayo. Thank you very much, Senator Gordon. Our next question from Twitter is for Senator Antonio Trillanes. Fernand Romero asks, What are your contributions that have created an impact on businesses and environment? Um, first of all, that's largely the function of the executive branch. So indirectly, as a, as a legislator, we, we define, we produce some legislative policies that may help impact later on but it has to be implemented by the executive branch but in this particular case uh, the two bills that I've uh, the two laws that I've cited earlier the AFP modernization law once we get to improve our capability to defend our country that can uh, uh, induce or increase the confidence of uh, investors that uh, we're not we're not vulnerable to um, domestic and uh, foreign threats so it may not be directly related, but it uh, will amount to something or impact to something later on. And another one is the, uh, the salary standardization law and the other benefits for uh, government uh, employees. This will, in a way, uh, redound to the benefit of the economy through the increased purchase power of this uh, sector. Thank you, Senator Trillanes. Our next question from Twitter is for Mr. Baldomero Falcone. This is from Twitter user Mang Pandoy. In your professional opinion as a business consultant, what are your chances of winning a Senate seat? <coughs> I think I have very good chances. Kasi ako ra ang bisaya. <laughs> so uh, I'm calling on all bisaya from Manila, Visayas, and Mindanao to support me so that they will have proper representation. No? Uh, wala akong gastos masyado because uh, the DPP is the only party that uh, accepts membership of only 100 pesos for a lifetime membership to the DPP, Democratic Party of the People, Democratic Party of the Poor. And it heartens uh, us greatly that uh, online and uh, coming in, we are the fastest growing uh, national political party that is greater than the liberal and the una combined. So, uh, <laughs> it warms our hearts. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you very much, Mr. Falcone. And thank you to our Twitter friends who have given us their question. Now we go to one of our guest panelists. We now have a question from Joseph Navarro from the University of the Philippines and core group member of Youth Vote Philippines. Order of response for his questions. First, Senator Trillanes, Mr. Falcone, and then Senator Richard Gordon. Joseph, your question, please. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat, mga candidates. Uh, isa lang po yung question ko para sa inyong tatlo. Alam naman po natin na ang Pilipinas daw ngayon ay dumadaan sa maraming pagsubok. Ngunit na unawaan din natin na lumalago daw po ang ating ekonomiya at du dulot daw po yan ng uh, investment natin sa human capital o human capital investment. Ngayon, ang tanong ko po bilang isang kabataan, bilang scholar ng bayan, ano po ang inyong youth agenda para sa aming mga kabataan? Alam po natin na tayo po ngayon ay mar maraming kabataan sa Pilipinas. Ano po ba ang plano nyo para sa mga kabataan? At paano nyo po kami nakikita na tutugon sa malawakang panawagan tungo sa pagbabago at ganap na pagkundad? Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Joseph. Napakamarubdob. Senator Trillian, as your question, uh, your answer, please. Yes. Uh, as far as the youth sector is concerned, I will have to incorporate it in my uh, education agenda, which is the comprehensive uh, student loan program 
I think it will empower uh, the, the college students who can't afford to finish uh, their education with this uh, particular uh, piece of legislation. Another one is the mandatory computer education for all high school students because right now in the public school system, they hardly have computer laboratories. And uh, this will uh, hinder the improvement of uh, the students in those areas. So I think those two bills will greatly contribute to the youth development. Thank you very much, Senator Trillanes. Senator Gordon, your, your answer to the question, please. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Falcone. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we need to cut down the number of years that uh, students are uh, in school, no? Uh, too long, too much. Uh, they should be taught how to be business-minded as soon as possible. They should be taught entrepreneurship as soon as possible. Because in this stage of our uh, history, we need to really uh, upgrade the Philippines economically. We don't have to uh, break up families, sending fathers, mothers abroad, no? Nakakahiya. We have so much natural resources here. We should teach our youth how to be business-minded, how to be entrepreneurial. And I fault our educational system for being de uh, deficit, deficit in this regard. Thank you very much, Mr. Falcone. Senator Gordon? It takes 20 years for a, a young man or a young woman to graduate. No? And that's important. Pareho rin isang bansa. It took about 20 years for Japan after the major restoration to beat Russia dun sa Laban, dun sa Battle of Tsushima. Naging industrialized sila. Ganun rin ang Korea. After the war in Korea, lumaki ang Korea. At by 1988, they also hosted the Olympic Games. First world sila. Ganun rin ang bata. Pag pumasok ang bata sa eskwela ngayon, ang teacher niya, 17,000 ang eskwela, ang sweldo. Ang sweldo ng teacher sa Singapore, 92,000. Magtataka ka, isang bahay na Singapore kasi lang laki ng subik, na pwede mong ilagay ang tatlong Singapore sa Laguna de Bay, eh, tinatalo ang buong Pilipinas. When you go to school, malalaman mo, 10,000 pesos na per student ang binibigay ng gobyerno sa atin. Sa Korea, 270, 297,000 ang binibigay kada estudyante ng budget nila sa bawat estudyante. So, paano magkakaroon ng magandang kinabukasan kung ang Malaysia, ang Thailand, mas malaki rin ang binibigay? Kaya kailangan ayusin natin ang teachers. Thank you very much, Senator Gordon. And thank you, Joseph Navarro of the University of the Philippines for your question. And we also have a question from Mr. Romy Rosas. He's the National President of REACT Philippines. Order of response, former Senator Gordon first, Senator Trillanes next, and Mr. Falcone. Romy, your question, please. Thank you, Linda. Uh, I have a common question for the three candidates. Um, REACT Philippines uh, work hand-in-hand -hand with uh, the CRS and the RRMC and the Red Cross. And uh, we're always involved with uh, disasters and uh, calamities. Now, what program of government would you have to further enhance the capabilities of the ND NDRRMC? Well, unang una, co-author ko dyan, co-sponsor ko nitong NDRMC. Ako naglagay ng disaster risk reduction dun sa law. Uh, dati, disaster management. Dapat disaster risk reduction. Dapat tuluan natin ang lahat ng mamaya na magkaroon tayo ng mga volunteers on the ground para palapit pa lang ang bagyo. Meron ng mga first responders na in charge. So, okay, kailangan mo ng dugo. Alam mo na kagad kung anong type ng mga tao doon sa lugar na yon. Kung alam mo anong kalaban mo, kalaban mo yung tabi ng ilog, baka umangat yung ilog, magbabaha, o katabi mo yung bundok, pwedeng bumaksak. Kailangan may pipito. Kaya binibigyan ko ng pito ang mga members ng Red Cross. Uh, para sa ganun, masa mapipituhan nila yung tao para aalis sila. At kailangan talaga dito, lagyan mo na talaga ng training. Dapat every home should have a CPR first aid na nag-aral para, halimbawa, tumirik ang isang tatay o nanay, merong talaga magagamot. E In-expand natin tuloy ang ating capability as a nation sapagkat tayo ay uh, uh, archipelagic nation. Dapat mabilis tayo na makakapagdala ng luna sa mga taong ay hirap. Thank you very much, Senator Gordon. Senator Trillanes. Uh, my, uh, my legislative proposal uh, to improve our uh, preparedness, disaster preparedness, is the creation of the, envir the emergency management agency. This will be directly under the office of the president because right now, what we have is uh, it's not sound because the NDRRMC is just a bureau under the Department of National Defense. And uh, as we know in uh, crisis management, you cannot uh, manage well under if you have a council. 
you have to have um, uh, you have to make decisions uh, you have to make decisions so right away and you, you you don't have time to debate on it so with this environment uh, or emergency management agency under the office of the president you can have better control over the situation and this will craft the the policies on disaster uh, and improve our capability in disaster forecasting, disaster preparedness, disaster response, disaster risk, uh, or rescue and rehabilitation efforts. Thank you, Senator Trillanes. Mr. Falcone, your answer, please. Yeah. Uh, get the uh, barangay officials to to have uh, disaster preparedness uh, knowledge, no? And get everybody, every family, every members of the family to be involved and knowledgeable about this, so that whenever there is disaster, uh, the damage should not be very excessive. That's all. Thank you very much, Mr. Falcone, and thank you, Mr. Romy Rosas of React Philippines for your questions. When we return, the closing statements from our candidates after the break. This is ANC Sarapan 2013. <laughs> I'd like to thank our three candidates and our special panelist, Professor Prospero de Vera, for coming to our show tonight. Thank you too to the Commission on Elections and our election partners, to our live audience, and to those following us online. Let's now get the closing statement of our guests. We begin with Senator Antonio Trillanes. One minute, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Linda, for this opportunity. And I would like to congratulate my fellow candidates. The essence of democracy is the right of the people to choose their own leaders. This coming May 2013, you will exercise that right. You have to choose well, and if you choose well, this country will be great. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Triliano. Short but sweet. Former Senator Richard Gordon, one minute, please. Alam niyo, kailangan alamin natin what makes for a good senator. Hindi lang gagawa ng batas o paramihan ng batas na ipafile, ngunit mapapasa yung batas. Kailangan din naman mag investiga sapagat yan ang tabaho ng Senate para ma-counterbalance ang power ng Presidente at ng ibang hanay ng gobyerno. I've been a constitutionalist. I've been a delegate to the Constitutional Convention while I'm still a student in law school in UP. Ako po ay uh, naging abogado at uh, tayo po ay naging mayor. So alam ko po ang local government. Na-file ko po yung bill na plebs kahit hindi pa ako senador noong araw. At uh, pati po yung pre-port bill. Ginawa po natin yan kahit hindi po tayo senador. Naglalabi po tayo dyan. Tayo po ay naging cabinet secretary sa tourism. Tayo po ay naging senador. Yung automated election law po, ginawa po natin yan. Kaya pa, masasabi ko po, sa experience po, may kakayahan po tayo. Ang kailangan naman po, ang tao ay mag-isip sapagkat kailangan po natin magbago ang buhay sa edukasyon. Hindi competitive ang ating edukasyon. Hindi po competitive ang ating military. Hindi po competitive ang ating mga ginagawa sa kabuhayan. Kaya wala tayong trabaho. Kaya kailangan po, mamili kayo magaling. Thank you very much, Senator Gordon. Mr. Falcone, your final words, one minute please. The crying need of these times is change. And uh, I don't believe change will come from uh, candidate. Uh, change needs new faces. And the Democratic Party of the people is committed to radical change that will transform this country for the better. No? As a matter of fact, we are not doing lip service. We are helping the poorest of the poor. In, for example, Zambales, we have given livelihoods to the poorest of the poor Aitas. More than a thousand Aitas were given livelihood magnetizing iron sun from Lahar, desilting the Santo Tomas River. And we are doing an inventory of all the squatter families in Metro Manila for uh, uh, collocation into Zambales, Barangay Bilyar Butulan, where they will be provided houses and lots of 200 square meters with, uh, with houses of 50 square meters. In other words, these are not lip service. We are actually doing this. These are not promises. That is the advocacy of DPP, Democratic Party of the Republic. Maraming salamat, Mr. Baldomero Falcone. Of course, Senator Richard Gordon and Senator Antonio Trillanes. Thank you for joining us tonight, gentlemen. And to all our viewers here in the Philippines and on the Filipino channel, thank you for joining us. Catch this episode again on our YouTube channel, ANC Alerts. I'm Linda Humilia. Join us again next week for another senatorial showdown here on ANC's Harapan. 2013!